Hi, I'm Wendy Lowy Sloan, and this is What's Up with Wendy's podcast. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about myself. I began my career in New York City as a television producer for talk show legends Phil Donahue and Geraldo Rivera. And for the last decade, I've used these experiences to create my unique style in interviewing hundreds of A-list celebrities, newsmakers, comedians, musicians, reality stars, fitness and nutrition experts, best-selling authors, and so much more. So I hope you enjoy this wide variety on my podcast. I hope you'll share and subscribe. And again, thanks for tuning in. This episode of What's Up with Wendy's podcast, my guest today spent the last 13 years traveling the globe with her award-winning company, helping entrepreneurs, top executives, leaders, and teams in companies like Google, TD Bank, IKEA, Uber, PepsiCola, and Disney break out of their false persona, learn how to embrace their superpowers, and find their voices. Her book, Swagger, Unleash Everything You Are and Become Everything You Want. Leslie M. is joining me, and she says, don't look down. You'll find out what that means and all about self-belief and so much more. You won't want to miss my interview with Leslie M. up next. I'm so thrilled for my guest today, former TV host, advertising creative director turned training guru. She has spent decades traveling the globe with her award-winning company, Combustion, which we will talk about, and, and, and her unrelenting passion to unleash your human potential. Now, if that's not something, she is now a speaker, author, swagger coach who's been called, and this gets me every time, better than therapy. Her book, Swagger, Unleash Everything You Are and Become Everything You Want. Why would we not want to read this book and know about Leslie Elm? Welcome to my show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. This is so exciting. Your energy is contagious. Oh, well, thank you, babe. Listen, I got plenty to spare, so eat it up. Go, girl, girl, just eat it uh, up. <laughs> just, just reading your book, it bounced, out at, it bounced out at me. I mean, it's in your words, just, just reading them. So how do you, let's first talk your amazing book. How do you define swagger? Well, I'm not talking about the old kind of show offy in your face, peacocky, arrogant kind of swagger. That is bad swagger, old swagger. The way that I define swagger is the ability to manifest who you really are and hold on to it in the face of all of that psychological crap that's going to try and come for it, regardless of the situation or environment. So it means you have one face, one heart, one truth, and you show up with it wherever you are and with whoever you're with. Okay. In the book, you talk about the psychological side of it. Um, it's a lesson, a tool. Um, it's helping people find their swagger. How did you ever find, how do you, how did you find your swagger? Cause you got more of it than ever I, anyone I've known. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to have been raised by amazing parents and my mother in particular from day one constantly reinforced that I was good enough just the way that I was. It was the best gift that a mother could have given a, a kid, for sure. And I, I wasn't conventional in any way, shape, shape, or form. I was precocious. I was kind of smart. I was a pain in the butt, super hyper, very creative, didn't have a lot of focus, but had a lot of passion. You know, my little body was filled with passion. And whenever I would, I would, you know, do me in the world and things did not go great all the time, because you can imagine when you're a kid like that, my mother would say, you have to show up as exactly who you are from the word go. And then you know who really accepts you for you and who doesn't. And so I took that into my whole life and just applied that. And I, you know, I'm not saying that it was always easy, but I had a very clear true north. I never felt like I had to pretend to be something that I wasn't. I, I very much was focused on who are my people? Who's going to get it? Who's going to accept it? And if they didn't, well, I would go find new people. Can I share two little stories with you? Because that just got me when you said that. And um, and I had interviewed Tamron Hall last week, and she had talked about um, being raised by amazing parents that gave her all the confidence. So 
my parents, when I was a little girl, I, I just, I thought the world, they used to say, oh, the world revolves around Wendy. No, it wasn't that. I just thought that I was just a happy person. I was surrounded by love and, and from my parents, not from my siblings, from my parents who, who always gave me the belief and the feeling and the love that I could be and do anything in the world. So I was always just this happy, outgoing person. And from an early age, I knew that I wanted to be a television producer. I wanted to be a reporter. I wanted to be in a so far, I wanted to go in that direction. And that direction just always drove me because I knew what I wanted, but it was the love and the confidence that I got from my parents. Um, and I lost my dad recently, which is which is tremendous grief, but I feel him still pulling me and, and giving me things. And it was always that journey. And so I got to New York City and my second job in television was with Phil Donahue. So, and that, I just walked into that. I don't know how, but I think it was the energy Maybe it was my swagger that I didn't know I had, or it was the confidence. Um, and it just, I think if you manifest and put it out there, I, I just had to share that story with you. It's just, I, I get it. Oh, I love that. Listen, I lost my mom a, um, a couple of years ago Sorry. as well. And it leaves a, an incredible hole. And I think once you work through the grief, you realize once the sort of the grief residue starts to, starts to, you know, um, dis, like dissipate a little bit, you realize just how huge the remainder is. You know, what, what you have been left with and all of the messages and all of the, the reminders, because that's, I think, the key. Because when you, when you know that you are loved for who you are, whenever you have to face down fear, you can, you can look at yourself in the eye and say, what's the worst thing that can happen? Cause it can all fall apart. And you know what? I'm still going to be loved. And I think that's what's really important because so many of us are afraid to take risks and to step out of our comfort zone and to, to, you know, go and grab the world and eat it up because we're afraid of being rejected. We're mm -hmm. afraid of, of not, not being accepted. And if, if we can manage that fear, then we start from a really solid foundation. Then it's just about sort of navigating, negotiating the world. But mm -hmm. it's when we don't have that that center, that rock solid center, we're really easily shaken off our course. Mm -hmm. These are all elements that we all want, especially as women to do. Um, what would you say to the young women out there um, for the roles of women in society? I mean, we have evolved so much. Um, I mean, long before you, for you and I, but like lately, I mean, we have evolved so much and women are stepping up. Women are, you know, powerful people in the workforce. Women are not, you know, we're not being beat down anymore. We're not being second fiddle to men anymore. It's such a, it's such a different, wonderful world that we're all becoming equal. Yeah. I mean, I think growing up as a young woman in today's environment is incredibly challenging because of all of the messaging around external validation. I think it's so dangerous because, you know, External validation doesn't fill you up. It just, it doesn't. You have to start with internal validation. You know, external validation is kind of like the candy. It's the icing on the cake, but it's not the cupcake. It's not the thing that you really want and need. And I, I think that we're, what's, what's beautiful is that we're starting to shift this idea of, of we're not asking for permission anymore. We're just mm -hmm. taking it. And in many ways, it was there for us to take all along, but so many of us didn't believe it. We didn't recognize it. We didn't understand that we had the power to do that. And the message today is, go get it, girl. There is <laughs> nothing that's beyond your reach or your power. And I love seeing that reshuffle and that reshift because I always believed that in my life. I mean, you know, again, I was raised by a feminist mother who said, go get it, girl. And so I went to get it and nothing could stop me. You know, when I would, you know, when people would mansplain me, I would just laugh at them because you know, it's like once you know who you are, it doesn't get under your skin the same way because you don't feel like something is someone is taking something from you because nobody can take your power. Right. I mean, you can choose to give it to them. And right. if you're if you're conditioned to give it to them, then then you'll continue to do that. And the moment you realize, wait a second. You can have my power. I mean, I can, I can choose to, to give it to you if I want to. By the way, don't do that. Don't give anyone power. No. But you can choose to do it. And I think now there is enough over sort of overriding messaging that people are going, really? I can just, I can just do my thing. It's like, yep, you sure can. You own your space in the world. You don't take crap from anybody. You show up with your truth, your intention, your self belief fully in place and you just eat up the world. 
So how does someone out there who, who doesn't have it, how do they truly find it? How do they get a handle on it? What do you tell these people that they just can't, like they can listen to you, they can listen to, you know, other people's stories, they can see it, but they just can't get a handle on it. Well, I wanted, I wanted the book to be practical. That was the whole thing for me is I didn't want it to just be, you know, no, no shade to, to purely sort of inspirational, motivational books, but I didn't want it to be just that. I wanted it to, to literally be a step by step hand holding process because there is a way to systematically break through those blockers that are holding your swagger back. The, the thing that is challenging though is that when you're, when you're on the, the, uh, like the wrong side of swagger, you know, when you haven't found it yet, it feels so overwhelming mm-hmm. and you just don't know where to begin. So what, what I always tell people is that the first step is to, to break it down. So it's not so overwhelming to understand where is your swagger getting stuck? Because if you can recognize and understand where it's getting stuck, you can start sort of spot healing, spot correcting, and you take it one little piece at a time and you practice and you practice and you practice because your our brains do not like change. Right. Our brains can't differentiate between. Yes. Yeah, they can't differentiate between I'm going to speak up in a meeting fear and a tiger is going to eat me fear. The fear is fear. So we have, you know, when we've lived a certain way for a long time, our brains tell us that that's the right way to live because we've survived. But I don't want people to survive. I want them to thrive. And that's going to mean facing some of these things and start digging in and being super, super practical and actionable about breaking stuff down piece by piece. And as you do it, it's almost like it fuels your fire. If you, Mm -hmm. you know, for example, a lot of people don't know how to speak their truth. It's not something they've been doing. It's not something they're practiced or skilled at. So they're going to have to practice And so I have like exercises about how to speak your truth, how to get used to the sound of your own voice and the pounding of your heart and the way that it feels when you do it. You're going to have to do that a bunch of times when the stakes are super, super low in order to develop that competence that's going to lead to the confidence to do it more regularly. So it's not swagger is not a switch that gets flipped. You don't wake up one morning and go, "Woo, my swagger's been unleashed." That's it, you know. I only wish, you know, I would be, I would be like the most successful person in the world if that were possible. But it, it is a journey, and like anything, like any change that you want to make, it's a journey. But like any change you want to make, it's completely doable. I promise you that. I've worked with thousands and thousands of people, and that's what inspired me to write the book in the first place. Is because I, I could see the change that was happening in all of these people, and it blew my mind. So I went, I must. I want to clone myself. How can I clone myself? And you're cl- you're cloning it. If you just see on talking to Leslie Am, her book Swagger Redefined. In it, she redefines swagger as the ability to manifest who you really really are, regardless of the situation or environment. And there's one part of it, and I want to ask you the telltale sw- signs of swagger, but you're in the part, chapter six, ambition. Um, you say, you're. don't get me wrong, you're all for it. It's not a bad thing, but there's a big difference between being purely ambitious and being in your place of excellence. Mm-hmm. And I love that. That was like one of the chapters I really, really loved about this book besides every single other chapter, especially <laughs> when your sa- when your swagger slips, because we're all going to slip a little bit and that's going to be okay. And you say that's okay. Um, what are the telltale signs of swagger? Oh, well, there's a, there's a lot of them. I mean, I, I think I'm going to give, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a few, but you know, what's fun is you can, I mean, if you go to lesliem.com, you can actually download your own proof of swagger assessment. So you can see where you sit on the swagger scale. Oh, I'm doing the, that right away. Yeah, you right got to do it. Right, you got to do it. Um, there's there. Okay. So first of all, one of the most important things is that you know your value in the world. If you if you are really questioning your value, you know you've got a lot of work to do on your swagger because those with swagger go, I know who I am and what I bring to the party. You also have to start developing a little bit of, I call it a, a little dose of don't give a you know whatness. Um, because if you care so much about what other people think of you, you're going to be trying to fit into the box that they have created for you. So you have to have a little bit of the whole, well, you do you, boo, and I'm going to do me. 
And so you don't want to judge others just the way that you don't want to be judged yourself, but you cannot adjust to sort of the lowest common denominator of what human beings are because, you know, it's the standards aren't always so high. <laughs> so mm-hmm. right, you've right, got to, right. you got to just go, this is me and I'm going to do me and you do, you do you. Um, you show up with your truth, intention, and self-belief in firmly in place. You understand what it is that you want to communicate really important. 